How are you doing? I'm good. And you? I'm doing good. I keep getting your emails. So finally today I had a free, a free minute to jump on. Wanted to see what, what's going on. Awesome. Yeah, we're uh, just getting started. People tend to trickle in. Okay, cool. So, um, is that a cruise that you've been on? It's a, it's a great. Background. No, it's just a back background. I was gonna say, my girlfriend you know, and I. My... Go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say, my girlfriend and I are going on a uh, a cruise in February. Oh yeah, which one? Uh, I don't know. She's got the whole thing planned out. It's a, it's a week in the Caribbean on one of the newest ships. It's a, uh, it's a line dancing cruise. Oh, very cool. All right. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we have a, we have a cruise booked in February too on the princess. We're going down to, um, Fort Lauderdale, down to San Juan, Grand Turk, Dominican Republic, and then back. I'm not a hundred percent sure we're going to keep the cruise. I might, I might postpone it for a little while. But um, yeah, it's funny that you're going to the same place. Do you know what stops you're going to? Not at all. It, I mean, she booked it a year ago and she just reminded me like, you know, we're going in February. So don't book anything that week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would suck if you did. Yeah. So tell me what's going on in your business. You know, it's um, I'm in Indianapolis still. Um, I was working with the Dispo Wholesaler. The guy was local. He was part of astro flipping which is this organization i'm kind of part of yeah me too and then he just okay so you're still with them okay cool so yeah so then um he kind of just did he started doing his own thing i guess his wife has joined the business so i guess he doesn't need me anymore so he kind of ghosted me and i i found this other girl on facebook and um i'm just not really happy with the way she is handling the business i mean she just thinks that we can write dozens of contracts and if half of them fall through that's okay and i'm not really happy about that attitude so yeah. um you know i just wanted to see what you do i know you still seems like you're still working in indianapolis i wanted to find out how you work and maybe you know what what you're looking for in indianapolis to see if we can do some deals together absolutely okay um well no i just just to um just to really interject real quick i do have your website for indianapolis and i have all your buy boxes so I guess my question to you is if it doesn't fit one of those four buy boxes, you're not, you're not interested. Is that kind Correct. of true? Correct. Okay. What I was just going to tell you, um, and um, I, I ask everybody the first, this question uh, every every week, how many offers did you get out today? Today? I haven't got anything out today. Okay. You're the first, you're the first call I've gotten. Out. Okay. Um, yeah. What it is, is... Um, have you downloaded ah, my time box? I don't think so. No. Yeah, uh, uh, Joe, our moderator, Joe Figueroa, will put a, a link to it in the chat. But um, okay. I encourage every. That's a time box that I just developed over years, um, and basically what it does, it gives me the ability to compartmentalize hours. Okay. So, because I, you know, when I'm working on. Uh, I'm working on a section eight up in Macon. I'm working on, um, a coin operated laundry in, uh, in, uh, Orlando. I'm working on, on a, uh, apartment building here in Lakeland. And, um, uh, I'm working on some, uh, what I've been doing to answer your question is you're familiar with the pad split exit strategy. No, I am. Um, uh, well, I've heard of pad split. I, I was introduced to that once. Okay. When I was out in Phoenix at a mastermind, but I really haven't looked into it too much. Okay. So what it is, is on the, this is last month's sheet. And what I do is okay. I target the pad split markets. Okay. Indianapolis is a pad split market. Okay. Right. Um, but then what I do is I will target uh, Zillow for sale by owners. Uh, I will target pre foreclosures. And the project I just finished today, as a matter of fact, is listings that have been on market for 100 plus days okay that was you know that's something i've been doing i've been um so up until recently i was doing a lot of agent outreach looking for off market listings and um pocket listings and then i just started getting online with the mls you know active on market listings yeah um, so i just started doing that i just closed my first deal last last friday with that way nice um but yeah, I mean, we didn't make a lot of money. There was another wholesaler that the young girl I told you was involved and then she inadvertently got someone else involved. So we had to pay her. 
So now do you do you have, do you send this information out or is it a matter of getting on this call to learn how you what you're doing? Yeah, that's basically what it is. People are asking me what I'm doing. Okay. You know, so when you say so when you say you do you you you're um going after pad split in Indianapolis, is there a criteria that you that 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 requires? Yeah. Okay. So the first thing is is you've got the Indianapolis numbers, right? Yes. What you is your website? Right. The 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 data that yeah. I track for Indianapolis. Yes. Yep. Right. I got that. First, when you're looking at any deal, what in let's just use Indianapolis as the example. What is the median home single family home value in Indianapolis? Right now, you say two hundred and twenty three thousand three hundred and twenty three. Perfect. In a down market, all right, our market. <laughs> Should have crashed last November. Everybody, I all the economists I know and follow are, you know, say the market should have crashed last November. And for some reason, he's being propped up. Okay. It's probably the phenomenon that I think is probably because interest rates are going, you know, up north of seven and a half percent. So people are holding on to their mortgages and just not moving. Right. Inventory is super, super low. Right. And mortgage applications are at a 30 year low. The last time mortgage applications were this low was 1992. Wow. Who was president then? You know? Bush. Bush Sr. Okay. okay. Yeah, Bush Sr. Because he got Reagan was 80 in 84. Bush would have been 90 or 88. So yeah, it would have been his, his last year. So after, then that would have been an election year and Clinton would have got elected and took over in 1993. Okay. Yeah. I was in college. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know I but mortgage application, I mean, you're, you know, we're, we're older, but uh, yeah, mortgage applications are at a 30 year low. So um, uh, that being said, um, the first thing I look at is what is the average for a city? And then obviously it's going to be different for neighborhoods. But I always start as a general rule is what is the average? And then I'm buying below that number. Okay. Okay. All right. And the reason why is the people below that number are still going to be able to afford those houses. But everybody above that number to 1.5 million now just had their mortgages tripled. Right, right. 18 months ago, you could get a three, three and a half percent mortgage. Now it's seven and a half going to eight. So the same. So what they're, they, how many people do you know, their average monthly budget is tripled for their mortgage? Oh, without it, everybody. <laughs> yeah. So now all those buyers that are, were at the, you know, above the median to 1.5 million have now all moved down. Right. So no, the concentration of buyers is below the median. Now, okay. that's my first criteria looking at any listing. If that, it's below that number. Below okay, that number. It. Yeah, okay. below that number. And if you get online and the gurus that you and I both know and love have been very successful since the last crash. The thing I really like about uh, Jamil is he was a real estate investor before the crash and got hurt real bad. Right, right. As I as I did, so he understands markets go up and they come down. Right. The other guys haven't been doing it long enough to understand this market is going to tick down one percent for the next four years. Well, it's a it's when you think of a crash, you think of like the stock market where it drops a thousand points in a day. Real estate doesn't do that. Real estate will drop a hundred thousand dollars in value once a month. You know, one percent a month for five years. And if you look at the data that I provide per city, you, you you see that in 2008. So that's the first criteria, and I'm buying below the, the median okay. for any, any city. Then the second thing I look for, pad split doesn't work in communities that have HOAs. Okay. So when I'm when I'm creating my, my list, like uh, the project I've been working on for the last three weeks is uh, making offers on listings that are 100 plus days on market. Right. I go through, what I do is I go to Zillow, I put in the address, Zillow pulls it up, I'll go down to the home details and I'll go down to the HOA section and it'll tell you if it's got an a HOA or not. If okay. it's got an HOA, you cannot pad split it. Okay. All right. Um, 
And then if it doesn't, then I'll actually call up the realtor and uh, um, ask, you know, tell him, ask him if, if it's their listing. I already know it is. Um, and then uh, I'll ask him for their email. And uh, I tell them I want to send them an offer. They gave me their email. I put together an offer and I send it over to them. So now what, what the pad split that fits in the buy box number three, because it's all cash needs, no work and went rent ready. Is that nope, true? That, that's section eight. Okay. Cause I don't see that on this sheet on your website for Indianapolis. I may not have updated Indianapolis yet. Okay. Okay. Indianapolis is th those properties are uh maximum purchase price section eight, maximum purchase price under a hundred thousand. Okay. Under, under a hundred. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's similar to buy box number three, because it says the max purchase is a hundred grand. Right. And you have all cash and max purchase is 89,000. And all right. So the all cash, that would be a fix and flip. Right. Right. Okay. So that'd be a wholesale deal. Right. Right. Yeah. And basically what you're going to, if you, what you'll notice, you take, you take the number at the top of the page, divide that by two. And that's the number at the, and in that all cash buy box. And the reason why is um, back in January, I had a hedge fund that was buying it like set at 72 to 80%. Right. Starting in April, I sent over eight to 10 deals to them and they came back at 50% of ARV. Okay. And all everybody's, all the rehabbers now are buying at 50% of ARV. And it start. It really started last November. Okay. I saw. Are, I saw you, are you buying the pad splits? Or are you selling those to someone else? I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm. Tr I'm buying the pad splits. Okay. And the reason why is until I learned about pad split two months ago from Pace, um, I wasn't. I wasn't doing buy and hold on single family houses. And the reason why is way back in 2008. That's what dragged my business down was the single family houses. Right. So. When I when I learned that pad split takes a single family house and turns it into a multifamily property, right? See, because pad split, you, they're you're renting out individual rooms, right? Right. So and you're converting you're converting living rooms and other spaces into rooms, Is and that that's right? right. And the way that I come up with my lists, are you familiar with PropWire? PropWire, no, I'm not. Okay, are you using Privy? Um, yes, I'm using Privy. Right now, yes, correct. All right. You know how Privy is $97 a month? Yes. PropWire is free. Okay. <laughs> I like free. <laughs> um, and I'm going to tell you that um, I've never got a deal. In, in, in what, the nine months I've been paying for Privy, I've never gotten a deal out of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can't say. I, I use a mo more for information. Well, I, I guess that that's not true. I have gotten a, at least one deal out of it. But it's definitely good data, that's for sure. Well, but see, that's the thing is Privy is awesome for markets where they have direct access to the MLS. Right. But I don't think that they have direct access to the MLS in a lot of places. And their third party, David, is absolutely terrible. Right. But PropWire, which was turned on to me by one of the other members um, that shows up on uh, Monday nights, um, is... Uh, um, PropWire is plugged into Zillow. The, I fi I figured out that PropWire is pulling all their information from Zillow. Okay. Yeah. So um, that being said, I, you know, I I got rid of Privy and I use PropWire. Privy um has got better filter functions, but I can live with it. So in other words, um, when I'm when I'm putting in my all right, so let's say for the days on market, um, I'm selecting active listings. I'm selecting single family homes. Um, I'm selecting um, a owned by an individual, not a corporation. Okay. Uh, then I'm looking for a minimum of 1500 square feet and a maximum of 3,500 square feet. Okay. And the reason I do okay. a maximum is because when you get, when you get into four and 5,000 square foot houses, you can't afford them. Right, right, right. You're, you're getting into six, $700,000 houses. And again, so, and then the other thing is um, when I go down, I'll put in the uh, the value of the property in, in, and then the max value of the property is going to be um, the median for that city. Okay. And then the last thing I put in is um, days on market, one, minimum 100. Okay. Yeah. So that being said, then it, then it pulls me a list and it actually shows me all the information 
And it shows me the name of the realtor who's listed it and the realtor's phone number, which Privy doesn't do that with third-party data. No, you're right. No, it doesn't even do that for, um, I have access to Indianapolis and all it gives you is the name and the office number. Exactly. So you still have, to still have to research that. And then the other thing I like about PropWire is um, it gives you all that information. And then when you go to the owner tab, it shows you who the owner is. It gives you their address. And then there's a button that for 10 cents, it'll automatically skip trace it. Oh. So now what's your offer on a house? Let's just say you pull a house. Um, are you offering list price or you is there a formula to your pro, uh, to your to your path splits that you're coming up with? All right. What I have been, what I've been doing, my offer for the 100 days on market is I've been um, offering seller financing. So full list price, mm -hmm. but seller financing, either okay. subject to, and then payments on their equity, or okay. if it's, if they own it free and clear, then I just offer uh, to make payments, uh, you know, on the property. Okay. Now I can tell you, that when you're sending those offers to real estate agents, when I when I send it over and five minutes later I get an answer, oh, seller rejected it. I know it never got presented. I don't really care. And the reason why, all these all these properties are a hundred plus days on market. Ninety nine point nine percent of listing agreements are one hundred eighty days. And a lot of these a lot of these ones I'm going after are 149, 150, 135. So I know that that listing is 30 days away from getting, that realtor is 30 days away from getting fired. 30 to 45 days away from getting fired. Okay. Except now I've built a list of all those expire, all those uh, uh, properties that are going to expire. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to call up the seller and say, hey, listen, um, I made an offer on your property. I don't know if you actually saw my offer. And I'm right. going to find out that like 70% of them are going to say to me, never presented your offer to me. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know that. Now, why is that effective? That seller, when you call them up, has now had the property on the market for six months and nobody bought it. Right. right. And they can't use the excuse of, well, I can just hire a realtor or a realtor assignment for me. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard that excuse, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With 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 expired, you now have a dejected seller that knows that the property is not selling, and he's not going to hire another realtor because he knows the first one just failed. Right now, why not go after the expired listings? I do go after expired listings. Oh, okay, because these ones are active for a hundred plus days. Why not just go directly to expired? I do. Oh, you do. Okay, I do. In addition um, to the well, first off, um, uh. I actually work with a really great realtor over in Orlando. And because she has access to the whole Central Florida MLS, she actually did the work to set me up every time a listing expires in Central Florida. And that's from Daytona all the way to Tampa. Oh. I get an email. Hmm. Okay. And and I mean, try, I could hire three people to, to call the leads, all the leads I get. <laughs> wow. You know. But that being said, so, you know, yeah, expireds, expireds are a great strategy. But that's that's just what I've been working on for the last 30 days. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. But before that, I was working on pre-foreclosures. And before that, I was working on um, uh, Zillow sellers. Zillow are the, you know, those are the sellers that don't want to use a realtor. Right, right. You know, and when you walk in and say, listen, you know, I just uh, made an offer an hour ago on a property. Um Kathleen, my realtor in Orlando, turned me on to it. Um, she, uh, I told her, you know, it's not listed. She, uh, it's in her neighborhood that she farms. Um, and she, she said to me, you know, this house, I, it, it's run down. It needs a roof. The neighbors are complaining about it because she knows the neighbors. She says, do you know how I can get a hold of the owner? I said, sure. Just go to the property and knock on the door of the house on either side. And lo and behold, she went over and knocked on the door. And the guy's like, oh, yeah, you know, we've been trying to get him to replace that roof. And it's rented <laughs> and it looks like shit. Here's his phone number. He lives in Michigan. Right. So she gives me the info. And she's like, I can't believe that worked. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, as a, as a in our business as an investor, that's just, you know, that's, everybody knows how to do that. Right, right. You, you want to find, you want to skip trace somebody? Go ask the neighbors where they are. 
They yeah, all, yeah. And you know, in my neighborhood, the neighbors on both sides across the street, they know me. You know, they watch my house. I watch theirs. Right. Same thing. So I called the guy up. Um, he said, "Yeah, it's uh, it's vacant. It needs a roof. It needs a kitchen. It needs flooring. It needs bathroom. It needs paint. It needs a garage door. Blah blah blah." Um, so anyway, I asked him what he wanted. He said, you know, I want between 300 and 325. All I heard was 300,000, <laughs> um, three bedroom, two bath, like 1900 square feet. So I call Kathleen back up and, uh, cause she, that's the neighborhood that she farms. I said, uh, you know, would you mind going over and see, I'm in Lakeland and for me to go down I four, that's like a two hour during, all right. With no traffic. 40 minutes with okay. traffic, two hours, one way. Right. So I'm like, Hey, would you go over there? Yeah. On Saturday, she went over there and she took 85 pictures. Oh my gosh. Oh, she's amazing. And you know what Jamil says, once you find that realtor who gets it, ah, they're worth their weight in gold. So she sent me all these pictures and I said, you know, the area, what do you think? If, if I went in and repaired everything that we, we talked about that needs to be repaired, what do you think I could uh, get for that property? She said 450 easily. But she also said, I don't think the cabinets need to be replaced. She said the countertops need to be replaced um, in the kitchen, in the bathrooms. Um, might need some paint, needs a new roof and a garage door. And maybe some carpet in uh, one or two of the bedrooms. But other than that, the house is fine. Hmm. And and landscaping. So right. what? I, other, than, other than the garage door and the roof, that's a lipstick remodel. So at $300,000... You know, somebody puts, uh, I talked to the owner, he's got a quote to, to spend 15000 on a roof. Figure what, another twenty five hundred three grand for a garage door? Then after that, it's granite countertops, carpet, paint. I don't think that's, I don't think that's more than 30000 I don't think that's more than fifty grand in total rehab costs. So what would you do, wholesale that deal or keep it yourself? Um... I would, I would use both options. I'd reach out um, to other pad splitters in the uh, in the neighborhood, and then I'd also try to uh, uh, because I when I made the offer to him, I tried to talk him talk to him about seller finance. He doesn't want to do it. He wants to do an all cash deal because uh, he has an under, underlying one hundred and fifty thousand dollar mortgage. Oh. He didn't want to. He didn't want to do sub two, and he didn't want to do a rep. So I made an all cash offer at three hundred thousand. Uh, told them I'd pay, uh, clo you know, closing costs. Um, but uh, what I would do is I would I would look to see if I could get that financed by a private money lender, mm -hmm. and then and then pad split it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what Kath the realtor Kathleen who looks, she's like that place is huge. It's got a ton of uh, of storage space, which means I can minimum add two more bedrooms. Yeah. So a property that would probably normally get fifteen to sixteen hundred dollars a month in rent, pad split probably more like thirty-two to thirty-five hundred dollars a month. Wow, big difference! And pad split does the the property management. So yeah. all you have to do is put in the program. Yeah. Yep, I put in a link for pad split in the chat. So if you want to, you know, get some more information on pad split, it's in there. And also, um, hey, Mike, um, yeah. I'm not co-host, so I can't see if anybody's in the waiting room. Oh, how come you're not co-host? I don't know. I logged in on the email you sent, but uh, maybe if I log out and go get in, in the other email. All right. I think you sent me two of them, so I'm going to go look to see if I can get in on the other one. Okay. All right. I'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Joe Figueroa. He's normally the moderator. <laughs> but we're clearly have technical difficulties beyond our control. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and jump on over there and see if I can get in, but I don't know if anybody else is there. There's Dennis. Okay. Is anybody else waiting? Uh, no, not that I can see anybody now. Cool. All right. Then we have a, uh, one new guest also. John, it's great to meet you. Yes. Nice to meet you. Too. And um, I'm also an Astro student. So. Oh, cool. All right. And um, I think we, there's uh, Brian, and then Dennis is right there. He just popped in. Cool. I'll be right back. All right. Talk soon. Uh, so anyway, John, um, I would do both. Um, I would try to try to finance it my, myself. 
uh, with a private money lender and pad split it. Um, or um, I might reach out to some other pad splitters um, to see if I can wholesale it to somebody who wants to do a pad split on it. Now, I, I don't want to take too, obviously there's other people, but the last question, I, well, the question that comes to mind is, why is pad split such a powerful tool? I mean, I'm not, I mean, you're the second person I've heard, you know, talk about it in the last six months. I've never heard Jamail talk about it. I mean, maybe Pace talks about it because I'm not a Pace student. But why is that so critical to this to this business right now? Because you take a single family home and you turn it into a multifamily property. See, the problem with a single family home, you're renting it to one family right. and they're making the mortgage payment every month. Well, what happens when they move out? What happens is now you, the owner, you're responsible for that mortgage payment. And if it takes you more than 30 days to, to um, get another tenant in there to get it cleaned up and get another tenant in there that money's coming out of your pocket hmm. now with pad split let's say you take a three bedroom two bath you i put a new roof on it i remodel you know i put granite countertops in spruce it all up i take the living room i take the living room turn them into additional bedrooms and turn it over to pad split now they manage it hmm. and they put let's say they they fill the house up with six people now, what happens if one person moves out? The other five people are still paying the mortgage. Right, right. That's why when I heard of that strategy, I'm like, I can start to buy and own single family homes. Because remember, way back in 2008, what drug down a $5 million real estate business, which was mine, was the single family homes. You know, when when you've got ten, when you got ten subject two properties rented out, and five people to move out in the same month, that cushion you set aside goes away in a hurry. Right. Ask Jamil. So that's how what happened to him? So you know your your business model talks about joint venturing. How do we, as you know, local investors, wholesalers, make this work so that you're involved? I mean, are are you not are you not looking for us to wholesale you those types of deals? Yep, absolutely. I mean, I'll bring you in, a, I'll, you know, I'll pay you an assignment fee or, uh, you know, I'll bring you in as a partner. Huh. Okay. Now, here's the other thing. The other buy box we didn't talk about that I just, um, I just uh, started last week. So I've got this property up in Macon and I'm calling, I was thinking about, you know, uh, keeping it for myself as a Section 8. I ended up not being able to do it. Um, so I was wholesaling it. So I was calling other Section 8 owners around the Macon area. And I spoke to a to a realtor, and what he he said he owns Section Eight, but he doesn't want that one because it's too nice. Mm. I'm like, well, what do you mean by that? What he's been doing is he's not afraid of war zones. He's buying boarded up houses for like ten grand, putting like fifty, uh, putting like twenty or thirty into it, and then selling them for like fifty, sixty grand and doubling his money. Wow. So. Um, the email that I put out, uh, I, I, last week and I got to do it again this week is if, you know, when you're driving around or your network of people is driving around and use, because most rehabbers do not want to be in D zone, D war zones. Right. Right. That's why I, you know, when the guy said he was buying border of properties in war zones, I'm like, all right, hang on a second. Oh, by the way, he's done 53 deals this year. Wow. But what I'm saying is now reach out to your network in Indianapolis in your crap neighborhoods that nobody's buying in and either get the property under contract yourself, send it to me and we'll split the assignment fee. So in other words, you get it for 10 grand, you, you lock it up for 10 grand, you know, you turn it over to me at tw uh, and, and we sell it at 20 grand, we'll split the, the assignment fee. Of course, right, right. Or and you have and you have buyers on all of these markets. I got this guy. I he's like I I I'm doing so well with this. I will buy in any city in America. Oh, that's what I said. <laughs> so uh, the other thing is, if you don't want to go through all the hassle and bullshit, just write down the address, text it to me at my office number with your name, you know, and so I know who you are. And if I lock up the deal, I'll pay you a thousand dollar marketing fee. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Well, I'm going to sit sit back and just listen to what else people have to say. So thanks for the information. Cool. Yeah. And eventually, um, I've been working on creating some tutorial videos for PropStream because not a lot of people know how to use it. Um, and then and after that, wire. 
or yeah, prop wire. Um, but uh, then after that, I'm probably you know I'll probably start you know doing more explainer videos about going after uh, war zones. Okay, got it. Good Thanks. talking to you. Yeah. Anybody else? Anybody got a question? No questions. I just wanted to. Uh, I don't have a question, but uh, uh, I still can't be co-host. I don't know what happened to the email. We'll fix All it right. next week. Yeah, we'll do. Yeah, we'll we'll do it next time. So um, Dennis has a question, and then um, I'd like to uh, meet Carol's mm -hmm. um, guest here, uh, Brian. Okay. Once, uh, once we uh, once we answer this important man's question right here. Hello, important man. I can't. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. For some reason, I wasn't able to see the the picture to mute my car, or mute my my volume. So weird. Anyway, my question is this: I got out seven deals today. Uh, verbals. Seven. But my question is: with pre foreclosures, um. Since we're calling on them, would it ever be a good idea to buy the lien if the lien is not on, the, if no one has bought the lien on the property as an investor? What lien? What kind of lien? Tax lien. Yo, absolutely. You buy the, uh, it's different in every county, but it's, pretty much the same in every county you just got to check into whatever county this property's in but i can tell you in florida and where i live in polk county same thing in volusia where i used to live you buy that tax lien you're going to get anywhere from 18 to 21 percent interest yeah because i'm trying to also not just learn but i'm also trying to diversify my learning as far as being a smart person and if i can't make money on buying the house at least i can uh, acquire the lien so that I, it's secured um, and it's good money and you make anywhere from like 14 to 25 percent depending on what county or municipality or whatever you want to call it that's right now the benefit is and this is again i'm speaking about the two counties that i know how it works volusia and polk county but most counties are the same way as far as i know i don't know about louisiana because they have parishes um but if you buy two consecutive tax liens, you then have the authority to foreclose on the property and it will wipe all the other liens on the property off. Property taxes are the superior lien on every piece of real estate. So in other words, okay. let's, let's say that there's a $500,000 house and for some reason the guy doesn't pay the lien, you go buy the lien, for, you know, let's say you put five or 10 grand down because he didn't pay his taxes. Then you get the lien the next year. Once you have both, you can foreclose on a property and his $500,000 mortgage gets wiped away. You now got a free and clear house. What I also found out is, here's the interesting part, guys. There are liens for just six months too. Some counties do six months. Most counties do one, one year. Um, but your money is secure. Um, it's like, it's better than the bank, way better than the bank. Let me, let I me mean, tell this... you, because I worked in a newspaper business, I used to see this all the time. Attorneys are really good at this, right? Um, in Daytona beach, a lot of people that own the properties on the river, the Halifax river, your property line doesn't stop at the water's edge. There's another parcel that's actually under the water that extends out into the river, maybe like a hundred feet or whatever. Well, what ended up happening is a lot of people, these million dollar houses and these, you know, docks with big boats wouldn't pay the taxes on the property that's underwater. So this attorney went in and bought up all those liens. And then the second year went in and bought up all those liens and foreclosed on that plot. And then went back to those million dollar house owners and said, get your boat and your dock off my land. Or you can pay me every month. And people were so pissed off it made the news. <laughs> and but so that's, my, that's what I'm saying is people 
for some unknown reason, get any idea that they don't have to pay property taxes. And people don't understand. None of us actually own our homes. The government owns our homes. <laughs> Everybody's. You don't pay your property taxes. You will. They will take your house away from you. Don't, they don't care who it is. So I wanted to say I got seven, seven out today. But just to remember, guys, and quote me if I'm wrong, Mike, I also give an option, not just the wholesale, but uh, to do a seller finance or a subject to. I give them that first before I give them the lowball offer because I don't want people just going, nope, and hanging up or nope, yeah. and I don't want to do business. I want to create that relationship, but I am also offering a seller finance. Absolutely. That's what I, and I was just telling John Lisandro, uh, I hopefully I didn't butcher your name, John. Um, that's what I do as I offer full price, full list price, seller financed. Or if they say no to that and they want all cash, then it's the low ball 50% of ARB, ARV cash offer. And again, it's because I operate on the, I operate on, your price, my terms, your terms, my price. You can have one or the other. Yep. Yep. So yeah, you're doing, everything right. you're doing everything right. So, so and the thing is your low ball uh, offer will make your seller financing offer look awesome. Yep. So uh, explain this to me though, on rent a meter, is that the best one that we can use? Because I know it's not free. I just got off the phone. It's not free. Here. But what else do you have to do the rents besides, besides Privy and PropWire and Prop Street? Call a local realtor. Okay. Call a local realtor. They know. Okay. Yeah. They got access to all that information. That's all I got. Yeah. Keep in mind that most real estate offices also have a property management division. Can you hear me? You're kind of cutting out. No, I hear you. I hear you loud and clear. Okay. But yeah, call a realtor. Call 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 a property management company. That's the best way to get to know an area. Okay. All right. Thank you. Cool. Good to see you, man. By the way, when we were talking about that property, I made an offer on that property today about an hour and a half ago. Oh, the one over there on uh, uh, Levine or wherever? Over in Longwood, yeah. Okay. Realtor, said, they, uh... Realtor said new roof, garage door, new countertops, maybe some carpet and paint. I could get 450 for that property. I offered them 300 grand cash. That's the one that was a subject too, right? The the two story that was like way ridiculous. Uh... No, no, no. It's a it's a ranch style house. Ranch style house. Okay. Yeah, and I, right. I, like I said, I can pad split it, or I might be able to find uh, a long term landlord that I can wholesale it to. Awesome. Because because cool. all it really needs is it's a lipstick remodel with a roof and a garage door. But again, send you another one in Tucson too. So, all okay. right. But again, the reason I went after that one is because that one was below the median. Yep. Yeah, I, I'm trying to Batman or Robin or whatever you want to call it, good cop, bad cop on some of these properties with people too. So, yeah. Okay. I'll send you some. All right. Thank you. See ya. So, there we go. Dennis Sullivan, everybody. How you doing there, Joe? Doing good. Doing good. Staying very busy. Nice. Got any deals done this week? No deals done this week. I've got one right now that's out for funding at the moment in um, North Carolina. Do tell. Do tell. Uh, she's looking for 140 for, uh, basically it's only, um, until the 19th. Okay. And then of course they're getting 20% on that. 
for that many days. And we're just uh, playing the, you know, after that, you <laughs> waiting on title. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need a report and we can't get started without it. So let me put a bug in your ear. Um, Farrah, Farrah and I are working on that 16 unit apartment complex. Right. Right there in Lakeland, right? Yeah. So I dug into the, I, I, I went over and looked, uh, walked the property, took a bunch of pictures. Um, and while I was there, guy pulls up on a moped, kind of asked me what I was doing. Cause obviously I'm taking pictures of the place. And, um, he tells me that he's the maintenance guy. So he gives me his phone number. So, you know, I, I looked at the pictures and then, uh, over the weekend, I kind of dug into the, uh, the offering document and, uh, realized that the purchase price is based off of future rents. Oh, so, wow. So the rents are low below market and they're pricing it like you're going to raise the rents for the next three years. Now, for everybody on this call, and I'm going to ask this to Joe too, who buys real estate at future value? Nobody. nobody. The answer is nobody. <laughs> nobody does that. <laughs> nobody does that. <laughs> None. <laughs> so I ran the numbers, and I mean, the numbers are ridiculous, you know? Um, so what I did is I, I applied the 1% rule. So um, at 1.8 million, that means the property would need to cash flow annually $180,000 total. Right. For 16 units. Right. This property is cash flowing at 120,000. That's gross rents. Right. So that violates the 1% rule. But it also gives you a, an idea that, well, at 120,000, that means the most you can pay for that property is 1.2 million. Right. All right. So that being said, um, and I'm leading to a point here. Um, but that still doesn't give me a cap rate or a gross rent multiplier that I was happy with. So mm -hmm. I figured we're going to go ahead and make an off. Now the seller is offering a million dollars in seller finance and he wanted 800 grand cash. Oh, wow. Yeah. But, but again, that, that was because the real estate commercial real estate agent put together this offering document at future values. Right. So um, I pulled the numbers and based off of, you know, previous apartments I've owned, um, decided we're going to make an offer at a million. He can sell or finance 900,000 and then we'll give him a hundred grand. Okay. So my question for you is, do you have any PMLs who'll be looking to invest a hundred grand short period of time? And by short period of time, I'm not talking about a gator. I'm talking about maybe one or two years. Oh, one or two years. Yeah. Um, I don't, it, would also, uh, it would also be in second position. Okay. Let me write mm -hmm. that down. Second That's position. That's why I'm telling you. Now, the other thing is, remember I told you I had spoken to the uh, maintenance guy and he gave me his phone number? Yep. I called him over the weekend. He called me back and he gave me the name and cell phone number of the owner. Now, real estate agents hate this, but every time I put in an offer on a commercial property, I always put in a... Uh, a, a uh, addendum that uh, I reserve the right to speak directly to the owner. Right. And they all hate it. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why is because, you know, this guy, th this real estate agent, he put this offering document together probably to sell it to a hedge fund that's got more money than brings. Right. That's not us. So what it is, right. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna call this this uh seller and just kind of tell him, listen, that offering document that he sold you, that's pie in the sky. Nobody buys anything on future values. Here's what it's worth million dollars. You get paid for the next 30 every month for the next 30 years. Yeah. But the reason I'm telling you is because I'm going to be looking for a hundred grand, hundred grand. Okay. Fair's no, got a guy. Fair's got a guy that uh, said he would he would actually invest the eight. You know, if the numbers would have worked out, would have invested the eight hundred thousand at a thirteen per thirteen point five percent interest rate, which that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. But um, we're not going to need that because the property just, I mean, financially wouldn't support that. Yeah, you're right. And then of course. 
depending on who you're going to take it to, it, it's they're going to look at what it's worth today. So it's not going to go anywhere if you made them that offer. So that kind of puts you in a in a in a very tough situation. You know, and the thing about it is the property is like 10 minutes from my house. Uh huh. <laughs> and the seller, I think the seller is like, like within 10 minutes of my house too. Oh, cool. So yeah, this one's just, this is just one of those ones that I've got to let them know that the real estate agent just sold them a bill of goods. <laughs> like you said, it, you know, at those numbers, it's never going to go anywhere. No, no, it's I not. Mean, and that's why it's been, however long it's been on the market. And that seller doesn't understand what's happening. No, nope. He's been no. on vacation. He went on a cruise for two weeks or whatever. Right, so. but I mean, how much, how long has it been in before that on the market? Yeah, I don't and, know. You know, and then it's still, you know, something's not clicking there. And, and I don't know if they followed up with that agent saying, hey, what's going on? Yeah, fair is, fair is the one that's been talking to the agent, but, you know, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go directly to the seller. But yeah, we're gonna be like, she's you know she's got a guy, but uh, we're now we're not looking for eight hundred grand. And there's a lot of people that will invest a hundred, right? Yeah, especially if I've got a. Um, it's true that this property's got market rents that are way below market rent, so there's a lot of upside potential. Yeah, and there's no laundry there, and there's no vending there. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, so there's there's your upside right there. Also, yeah. on top there's of that. A, there's a lot of upsides to this property. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I wanted to tell you that. And then the other thing is, I called Greg. I called Greg a couple times, but uh, do you know if he's like on vacation or something? Because he's not calling me back. I I um I haven't communicated with him either. It's been two months now. Yeah, I just wonder what happened to him. Yeah, I I got word that he was uh, having some. Uh, medical, uh, you know, and so he's probably still out because of that. All right, I'll send him a text then. Yeah, cool. So, anyway, that's what I got for you, my friend. Okay, I'll, I'm gonna start. You know, I already made it and put it in my notes, and uh, I will ask around. All right, yeah, I mean, uh, I just got to talk some sense into the seller. <laughs> Right. Or no, you're not, you're not talking sense. You might be talking truth. There's that. Yeah. You know, and the thing is, I might, I might put together a report and get together with them for a cup of coffee and show them yeah. what the numbers look like at 1.8 million, the way that the realtors got it structured mm -hmm. and just ask them, would you buy this? <laughs> <laughs> that's a great way to, that's a way, great way to get people to go. Oh no. <laughs> Oh yeah, well, exactly. If you wouldn't buy it. Why would I? Yeah, and, and that's that's that, and that's funny. You you progress. So what I've been doing for the for my funding, yeah, part yeah. of my business, and like, okay, here's what I've got. You know, would you lo like have somebody who who uh is asking for, and it's a small amount. He's asking for twenty thousand, second position, uh, ninety days but is only giving uh, a lien as a security instrument. That's it. And I'm like, well, you know, I've looked at your numbers and he put all the numbers down and there is, there is a $45,000, you know, uh, separation between ARV and after repairs and all of that, that he has. That's not a lot of money. No, that's no. not a lot of money. So no. I, I, you know, I'm like, well, you know, we're gonna have to uh we're gonna have to pass because there's nothing he, all he says, all we offer is a lien. And I'm like, no personal guarantees, no, no any other kind of way for us to secure this other than that. So I don't know if he's you know, I, I just sometimes you just wonder. <laughs> uh, I get the not wanting to do the personal guarantee thing because you can you can get way too many of those out. Um, yeah. but I mean with a second position, you got to be able to foreclose. Exactly. Exactly. You, be, you, you can't just have a lien. You got to be able to foreclose. Yeah. And there's no, there's no, the, the, so basically with just those 45,000, you're just giving $20,000 away. 
You know, and the thing about it is, if if he was insistent on having a lien, I would put it in there like, if this goes south, you pay the attorney fees up front. You pay my attorney fees up front. Because the only way to get that lien in front of a judge, you're going to have to hire an attorney. And that's a minimum three to five grand just to get him to take the case. Yep, just to even look at it. So it's not if I win, prevailing party gets attorney's fees paid. No, no. If I've got to go after your lien because you didn't, you know, you screwed up this deal. You're responsible for my attorney fees up front. That's the way I do that. I mean, first off, I would never do it that way. But if you were forced into it, yeah, you need to have some language like, no, no, this goes sideways. You're paying yeah. the attorney fees up front. Yeah. And so I, 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 I connected with other people who are doing the same thing that I'm doing. And I said, look, um, this is what I've got. I'm doing this one. I've got this other one. I've got this other one. And I gave them examples. And I said, these these three are, these three are good. This one, I would never send you something like this because I wouldn't pay for it. Yeah, I, I wouldn't help. I wouldn't do it. So if I wouldn't do it, then um, that was just job. I, you know, why would I shoot that over to somebody else? Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's either inexperienced or he's trying to hide from something. Yeah, I exactly. It. I get you know, it. Well, no, no, this this guy, he's there. I, I've done my work on the company. Right. And he's got it all. He's got his HUDs. He's got his all of these things. But sometimes you get a little bit too big, you know, and you start like with the promise of, oh, I'll bring other other leads, other deals to you once we fund this one. I'm like, that doesn't work. Yeah. You know. Reminds me of an email I got this morning from somebody who said they've got a big buyer's list they've been working on for a year. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and they wanted to JV with me. And I'm like, oh, okay. Hey, send me three of your, your buyer's names and phone numbers so I can call for references. Right. Yeah. It's only that's only fair. Yeah. Trust, what did, what did Reagan say? Trust but verify. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And on um, these days is trust verify 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 yeah trust a little bit more yeah you know yeah great so uh anybody else got questions yeah uh talk to dennis how's carol how you doing carol i am doing well but i want to introduce my guest brian oh all right hello brian hello how are y'all good brian marriott huh uh, that is i what can I help you with today, sir? Um, I'm not exactly sure, but I'm I'm glad to be here. Um, I met Carol through um Gator, and I'm a part of uh Sub Two as well too. So we're somewhat very close. We talk almost every day, and she had been telling me about this Zoom meeting that I kept missing for weeks, and then um we had just talked prior to the call um, and told me to hop on. So um, I'm here to learn and absorb just um, just to be a sponge and to potentially gain new relationships for sure. Um, Cause that's the name of the game of this business is relationship-based business. So that's, and I always been, I've always been saying recently, that's my superpower, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm here in Maryland with Carol. I'm in the Baltimore area, born and raised. So yeah. Um, that's really been my focus as far as um, on the lending aspect. Um, I have a little bit of experience as far as I have two properties I co-own with my brother. Um, he's a realtor here in Baltimore um, or in Maryland and in PA, and he has a property management company, and he just got his general contractor's license. So um, I'll send him some referrals, but I am looking to uh, potentially uh, own on the creative side, especially next year. Um, I'm excited what's to come so that's just a little bit about uh me uh for right now mike all right but thanks I'm for ask, having me i'm gonna ask you the tough question sure <laughs> how many offers did you get out today uh as far as off see i'm more focused on the the lending side or connecting side but um i'm i'm actively working i'm actually working on a um i already sent it to carol a hotel deal that came across uh uh and, and ironically it's here in maryland too it's a it's a 16 and a half million dollar deal um up in um perryville maryland um it's 
it just well it's it's located near a casino and a, a brand new great wolf lodge so i'm kind of like feeling out as far as um buyers potentially on that or anybody that can help structure it because the contact is somebody out of chicago um that i've been just recently working with so um that would be the only deal that i'm helping to accomplish right now as well actually me and carol have one and then i actually have two others that I'm working with on another mutual business partner of ours. So not officially like buying creatively myself, but helping to connect on all of these deals for sure. I'm actively working them every day. Well, I'm writing you down as a buyer, a creative buyer in the, what you're in Maryland, right around Baltimore. Yep. I like, I like that, that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> advertise, <laughs> advertise, advertise people. Let people know what you do. <laughs> Absolutely. I used to wear back in my very first home-based business, aka network marketing days, uh, we used to wear buttons and that that definitely was advertising or car signs. That's that's taking it way back, but nobody really does that like that anymore. They'll well, they'll wrap them, but um yeah, between hats, shirts, all of that. I love it. I love a caption or a phrase, something to get somebody's attention. Absolutely. That's right. And that's why I always wear this shirt. Um, let me ask you a question because, you know, you guys are networking up there in Baltimore. Um, and obviously the Northern cities are a bit older than the Southern cities. Um, do you know of any D neighborhoods, any war zones? Baltimore <laughs> can be certain areas. Um, Cause you know, I, I'm assuming most people maybe on this call know that Baltimore is a huge investor friendly uh, city. Um, I would say Baltimore, Philly, um, just the and major here, metro. Here's the reason why is last week I came across a real estate agent. Uh, he's a broker who is buying boarded up houses in war zones. He's not scared of drug dealers. He's not scared of crime. You know, he's not scared of tough neighborhoods. He's buying how boarded up houses. Oh, that's a lot in Baltimore. A lot. We that's, still do have a lot. And I mean, we're, and we're doing, and I mean, it's coming up slowly, but surely Baltimore's had a lot of investments made. I don't know. I don't know if you guys saw or care about sports like the Orioles just won the ALS. And can you Orioles. believe it? Can you believe it? Last year, they yeah. were dead last in the AFC East. Dead last. And then, by the way, I'm a Yankee fan and not happy with them this year. Oh, and then, <laughs> and then Baltimore just renewed. Um, I'm sorry, the Orioles just renewed. They're gonna stay another thirty years in in Baltimore, which is great because I mean that does. I don't know if that. I know this is very much off off topic, but I don't know how often teams actually change cities. It's not that very often, but um, but yeah, as far as like Baltimore's made a lot of investments. We have a a lot of hotels. John Hopkins being the most biggest and notable. Uh, the most notoriety um, that has actually bought up a lot of property, but there's a lot of um, gentrification going on. We have um, uh, 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 Brian, he's saying that he has a buyer that will buy up all the properties down there, even if they're bored up or not. So if we have, if you have properties down there that's in the bad neighborhoods, he has a buyer that will buy them. That's so here, have. here's how it works. Go out, find the owner, do a deal with the owner, buy the pro you know, get the property under contract for 10 grand, put another 10 grand on top of it for an assignment fee. If um, we send it over to my buyer, he buys it, we split the assignment fee. Or if you don't want to go through all that, just drive by the property, get the address, text it to me to my office number um, with your name so I, and number so I know who you are. And then uh, if we do a deal, then I'll give you a thousand dollar marketing fee. Oh, that's dope. <laughs> Yeah, Yeah, because yeah, I mean, literally on the west side of Baltimore, there's, there's a lot. Um, there's That's a what lot I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. We, we're, we're talking about networking. That's exactly what I'm doing. I got a buyer and this guy has done 53 properties this year. Wow. So, and the thing about it is with boarded up houses, P, the owners do not want them. No, they don't. No. But, you know, call them up, At say, listen, I'll take it off your hands for 10 grand. Boom, you're done with it. And I heard a little bit early because I had to be in and out and whatnot. Um, I heard a, one of you guys, I think it might be you, Mike. You like PropWire a lot? Yeah, love PropWire. Really? 
I want is is and hopefully I can freely say his name. Does Jerry Norton own that? Does he, he does. Yep. Okay. I know some people and I've used and I've utilized it. Um I will say I do like the fact. I love the fact. I don't know how he does it or what data that he got it from. The fact that you can find whoever the owner is, and then you can find the subsequent properties that they own as well, too. So, like, if they have more than one property, you can find that as well as, I don't know how accurate the mortgage information is, well, too. It's probably pretty close. It's probably, probably pretty close. It's probably, I'm damn near almost pretty close. Not necessarily necess the interest rate, but the mortgage balance is probably not that, that not too far off. But, um, yeah. I wanted your opinion on that. That's good that you like it. And I have access to PropStream. I don't pay for it, but I have access to it. So I did hear that you had, oh, uh, do you like PropStream? I dropped proper, I dropped PropStream. I dropped Privy and I'm using PropWire, uh, I would say exclusively, but, you know, 95% of the time. Really? I mean, look, you drop, you drop both of those two programs. I just saved myself $200 a month. That's cool. That, yeah, that's true. And, and I have figured out that pro or uh, prop wire is pulling all their data from Zillow. Mm. Now you want to okay. give me, you want me to give you a pro tip when uh, you only get the office number? Yeah. This is what I do. And uh, by the way, Carol, want to let you know that I've actually started creating the training videos for PropWire. <laughs> I know I've been Maybe promising we... you for like six weeks. I <laughs> right. actually started it over the weekend. All right. So we might get them before October ends. <laughs> yes. I, I okay. yes. Absolutely. Yeah, Brian is doing a training video for us how to use PropWire. And yeah. we've been doing it for a while now. So hopefully we'll get it soon. Exactly. I'm, I've actually been documenting whenever I, do, whenever, like I was describing, you know, how I do, how I do the uh, 100 days on market. Well, I'm actually documenting everything whenever I'm doing stuff now. Okay. Mm. So that being said, um, let's get back to the, to the um, boarded up houses. Um, you know, the one thing you, you know, one thing that Zillow doesn't have is boarded up houses because realtors don't list boarded up houses. No, not typically. No. Uh -uh. So that being said, there's no way for me being here in Florida to know where the crappy neighborhoods are in, in Baltimore. Correct. And that's why, you know, networking with as many people as possible is like, and like I said, most rehabbers are not going to buy in a D neighborhood. Okay. And I found the unicorn that is. I found one person that's going to do that, right? Okay. And like I said, he he told me, and I got to take his word for it, he's done 50 properties this year. Mm. 53, actually. Okay, so Brian and myself, I'd work to do for the coming up for the next month or so, right, Brian? Because you guys are up in an area where you, I mean, I can tell you where the crappy streets are in Lakeland. And, you know, <laughs> when, I, when I'm when i driving around, I mean, um, this apartment building I'm talking to, you know, it's off of, oh, you guys going to love this. My uh, my next door neighbor and I went out and uh, took our uh, guns to the gun range because we're going to go hog hunting and we're sighting in our guns. So we're driving to the to the to the range and we're going down Cumbie, which is kind of a, a drug kind of a neighborhood here in in Polk County. Some idiot climbs up on a railroad. Um, you know the you come to a railroad and they got the the metal uh, where the I don't know what you call it, metal brackets or whatever, where they've got the lights when the trains come and the lights flash. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This clown gets up there at 4 30 in the morning. And now the you know, somebody calls it in, the cops, the fire department shows up. We're we drive past there at nine o'clock in the morning. He's up there, and I mean, there had to have been eight or nine cop cars, five fire engines, an ambulance, the uh it wasn't SWAT, but it was like the uh sheriff county. The sheriff's EMS tent was there with their van. I mean, you know, news crews are there, and this guy's up there just having a grand old time. We figured definitely on crystal meth or something. We went to the range, did our thing at the range, came back. The dude was still up there. <laughs> but that's the kind of stuff that goes on in these neighborhoods, these really, you know, the, the bad neighborhoods. Mm. You know, I'm just describing to you, you know, our local bad neighborhood. But when I'm driving home, instead of, you know, just driving the normal route, you know, I'll actually come home and drive through those neighborhoods 
my girlfriend doesn't like to do it, but I don't care, you know. Um, and I, I'll look for. I'm starting to look now for the for the boarded up houses. Down down in Florida, there's a lot of boarded up houses down there. I guess I guess I always see them in major metropolitans. I guess. Yeah, and then and again, like I was talking about earlier, I taught this to a real estate agent. Believe it or not, when I was talking about the deal in Orlando that I made the offer on today. Um, She's like, you know, I'd, I'd like to find the owner. How do I do that? Well, you go over and you knock on the door on the right side and the left side and you talk to the neighbors. They always know where the owner is. So with boarded up houses, if you if you can't find the owner, go knock on the door on the, on the right side and on the left side and just start shooting a breeze with them. They'll always know where the owner is and they always know where the, the owner's phone number is. Uh, how do that you is like the... That is the most effective skip tracing you'll ever do. It just takes some time and some people skills. Now you want a pro tip? Sure. Go to Lowe's or Home Depot and buy one of those yellow vests that you see the construction workers on the side of the road. Uh, yeah, I mean, it might be 5 or $10. And when you're doing that, knocking on doors, carry a clipboard and wear that vest. Everybody in the world will talk to you. <laughs> I am not kidding. Wow. When I when, when I'm driving when I'm driving when I'm uh, driving for dollars and I'm doing my pre foreclosure list here in Polk County, yellow vest, clipboard, and I drive the neighborhoods on garbage day. <laughs> because if the garbage sure. cans out, you know somebody lives there. Yeah, that is true. That is true. And you know, I see people come down my neighborhood with vests and stuff on garbage days too. That's so, right. Yeah, and yeah, I do and, say and, hello. And, Sometimes I talk to them too. So yeah. And the thing is, if you're you know if you're just driving up and you've got the you know we buy houses sticker on your car and you're knocking on doors, people are like oh I don't want to talk to them. Right. That's true. But you you come in with you know you come in looking like somebody from the city with that yellow vest on and a clipboard like oh I got to talk to him. Yeah, yeah, I, by the way, I, I, yeah, I have to find out what's going on in the neighborhood. Why are you in there in the neighborhood? Exactly. That's what, yeah. yeah. Somebody oh, came to uh, to install my uh, Spectrum internet at my house and knocked on my door. And I'm like, I have AT&T. You know, oh, this is not so-and-so? I'm like, no. And he came, he had a clipboard, he had an orange <laughs> vest on, and he goes, do you want to switch? <laughs> <laughs> And see, Anything? that's what I'm saying is, these are the things the gurus don't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> this is the stuff you only learn if you're out there knocking doors. <laughs> and I, this wow. is just this is just stuff I've picked up for over 20 years of doing this. So how do you how do you apply it when you're driving? Don't take the same road home every day, and go through neighborhoods you normally wouldn't go through. Look for boarded up houses. And then if you don't want to deal with, you know, finding the owner, just write down the address, text it to me, and then I'll do the rest. Okay. Sounds like a plan. I think Dennis has a question. Oh, hey, Dennis, what's up? Um, on underwriting, since we're a little newer than you, um, is it better to do your underwriting at night and then just do all the calls in the day or do do your underwriting then call? How would you, what's the best scenario? What do you mean by underwriting? Copying. Oh, all right. Yeah, no. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Um, yeah. You got to call people when they're available. And then everything else is just uh, busy work. So yeah, I'm just trying to figure out, I'm, I'm just trying to find out uh, for time efficiency, should you cop all your stuff at night and then just call them in the morning or during the daytime? That yeah. way you just keep calling, calling, calling or. Yep. What, what you should do is, you know, at, at the end of your day, you know, just comp out how many, ever, however many properties you want to call the next day. Okay. Yeah. But you want to do that busy work in non-calling hours. That's it. 
here, here, here's a real basic rule when it comes to doing anything. Do what's closest to money first. What's closer to money? Comping properties or calling sellers? Calling. There you go. I Every time I look at doing a task, it's, you know, what's closest to money first? Thank you. And that's that's another thing too on my uh, on my time box form, where I've got my brain dump. I'll actually you know take out tomorrow's sheet and write down the things that I want to accomplish tomorrow. I do that at the end of the day. Hope that helps. Yeah, that's helped me a lot. I, I started in my CRM uh, notes for tomorrow and everything that I responded. So what I do is that I put in what to-do list and then what I got done and then what I got done, I follow up with tomorrow. That way we know that that everything that was in, you know, so I, I have my activity, my notes, and then my activities of what I did then and they, you know, they bounce off each other. Yeah. So here's what to do. Here's what I did, and tomorrow I'll follow up. Yeah. So that's that's a good tip there. I I, I started doing that. I've got notes for like 45 days straight now. Right. Um, going back to the to the boarded up houses thing, the property up in Macon. What I did is um. I actually used Google Earth, you know Google Maps where you can put in an address. So I put it in the property that we're working on and making, except I put it on, you know, the live map where you can actually see the houses. Yeah. The satellite view. And I use that. Like I was oh, driving. The street view, the street view. Yeah. I, I use that. Like I was driving the neighborhood. I found one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I found nine boarded up properties within two or three blocks of that house in Macon. <laughs> now, in doing the skip tracing on it, what I say? It was what, eight or nine properties? Mm -hmm. Five of them are owned by three corporations. Wow. I went into PropWare to, you know, to, to research them. Mm -hmm. And just like uh, Brian had said, those five, those three companies that own five of those boarded up houses own like 50 other ones. Oh, wow. What's that tell you? Somebody is going into that neighborhood and buying up those crappy houses because they're planning on doing something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the next push, what what they do is they they buy them, buy them dirt cheap, buy them dirt cheap, you know, renovate them, you know, inflate the value of the of the the house to say it's worth this much, you know, and then you do it with the next one and you, you bounce them off of each other. So this but one I, went up by a few more thousand, and then the next one went up by a few more thousand after that. And the next thing you know, the whole neighborhood. These guys are not doing that. These guys are buying them, boarded up, and leaving them. They're not doing a thing. They're just holding on to them. Oh, wow. So it sounds to me like they're getting as many properties as possible, and then probably come in and rehab them all at once. Yeah. And then there's the, uh, the price of all of them is going to skyrocket. Yeah. Probably not in the next couple of years, but I can, I recognize, I'm like, all right, how come five of these properties within a two block radius of this property I'm working on are owned by three companies? Five out of eight are owned by three companies. And it's probably the same person. It's three, it, when I mean three companies, it's three LLCs. It's, those three LLCs are probably owned by the same one person. Yeah. Or, or company. But yeah, that's that's one of the things you know that I did up in in Georgia, was I just used Google Maps to, you know, to like I was driving the neighborhood. Except I'm just sitting here on my computer in Lakeland doing it. So that being said, you know, for somebody like Carol, maybe you don't want to, you know, being female, you don't want to be driving through tough neighborhoods. Do it virtually. <laughs> yeah, Seriously, I'm do gonna, it virtually. Yeah, I'm gonna try virtually. Virtually, yeah. yeah. I don't know if you guys know anything about our sheriff here in Polk County, Florida. No, he's he's pretty famous. <laughs> Wait a minute, tell us the story again. What he did? So we uh, we in this made national news. We um, 
we had, you know, remember last, what was it, two summers ago now, or last summer, whatever, when the Antifa riots were? Well, we had Antifa came right here to, you know, Lakeland, Florida and started a riot. And I pulled somebody out, you know, was just coming home from working a shift, stopped his car, busted out the windows, you know, pulled him out of a car, beat him, you know, the whole nine yards. Cops showed up, kind of kept everybody quiet. Well, later on that evening, Grady Judd, sheriff of Polk County, gets on TV, national TV, and said, listen, we see it. We don't normally pay attention to social media, but we see that Antifa is planning to come back tomorrow and cause another riot here in Lakeland. And this time they're talking about going into the neighborhoods. And he said, to the Antifa people, listen up. This is Polk County, Florida. People that live here like guns. We support them. If you come here and try to go into the neighborhoods and break into their homes or burn down their homes, they're going to blow you out of their homes with their guns, and we're going to show up with the body bags. Said that on national TV. <laughs> By the way, Antifa did not show up the next day. I bet they didn't after that <laughs> announcement. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, no, no. Do not screw with rednecks. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I tell that story. It's funny. But, you know, when you're talking about going to the neighborhoods, use your head. And, um, you know, it's just as easy to do it with to do it virtually that is to, you know, be driving these neighborhoods. Because there are some there are. Trust me when I tell you, I, I, I've been to big cities, lived in big cities and our our bad neighborhoods are not like, you know, bad neighborhoods in Philly or Baltimore or. Indianapolis or hey. Detroit, hey. Chicago. Mike, uh, Jamil always buys in a bad neighborhood. Whenever you guys hear about Maryville, Maryville is a war zone. War zone is classified as someone getting shot. I mean, I lived in Maryville. I saw two teens with their feet hanging out of the of the white body bags. That's what well, he buys. All right. I didn't know that. He doesn't. I don't, uh, I didn't know that. I've never heard him say that. Yeah, Mar Maryville, well, he won't say that because he doesn't, because he's popular, but I'm not popular. But Maryville, <laughs> yeah, there's gunfire all the time. Um, there's a lot of, you know, uh, drug, drug houses there. Um, some Sinaloa would buy, uh, buy there and just, you know, make houses so that they can move all their drugs. But the, the popular, uh, uh, community that most of these people in Phoenix are buying is Maryville. Well, there you go, Dennis. You know the area to go shopping in, then. Yeah, just be careful. That's all. I mean, but you know, <laughs> just find your P's and Q's and act like you, you know, act like someone stole your money and just walk around like you, you know, someone stole your money. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you know, like just I said. Like I said, knock on the knock on the doors on either side. But if you're in a really terrible neighborhood, don't do that. Just text it to me, and I'll I'll skip it from this side. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it daytime. Morning yeah. time is the best time to do things. But yeah, after when the sun starts going down, now get out of there. You know. Oh, you know. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Do do your uh, do your driving for dollars in the morning because yeah, drug addicts tend not to want to get up in the morning. Anybody else? I'm great talking to Brian. Hopefully you learned a couple of things. Indeed. How about you, Carol? What's going on with you? Nothing new. Nothing new. Did you do any deals this week? I know, you know, um I, I don't know if I've told you guys, but I um I did contract working for the government and um my contract ended September 30. So for the last week, they've been pushing so much work on us to get everything in before September 30. Wow. Work all the way down to November. I had to put them in for those last two days. So I didn't get to do much um, real much um, real estate work because I was busy trying to get those in. Then come out, come find out on Saturday night that the government did shut down. So 
I did all that work last week. And then I had to turn around and do some more this morning. And I found out that my contract that I thought ended didn't end. It's extended for three more months. So I thought I was getting out so I could do real estate full time. I said, nope, three more months to go. So I said, all right. I'll three just... more months to go, but you continue to get paid. So that's good. Yes, that's what I said. I said, thank God. But God knows best. So I have the job still and I'm still doing real estate and I'm doing good. So. So I didn't do any deals last week. I was busy trying to get all those T's crossed for the government. This totally week, understand. I'm on it. Yeah, I totally understand. And yeah, we, we can get into a whole conversation about how our government is funded. <laughs> uh, you try to run a business that way, they would put you in jail. In jail. Yep, in jail. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a conversation for a different day. <laughs> yeah. So, um, anyway, yeah, um, I don't see anybody else has got any questions, but I did want to let you guys know that I have started doing the prop wire training videos. Yay. You hear that, Joe? He started. We're going to get it by the end of the month. Yeah, ma'am. <laughs> all right. All right. The other, yeah. the other thing I'm doing is um, all my different strategies of lists to go after. I'm going to yes. I'm going to create a whole course on how to go after uh, motivation for lists, financial uh, motivation, physical motivation, and emotional motivation, and all the lists that goes with each one of those. Okay. okay. Yeah. Looking forward to it. I think it was Dennis who had said a couple of weeks ago, like, you really need to do a course. I'm like, you know what? You're probably right. Yep. You should do a course. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll enjoy buying off you. Yeah. Yep. I would buy. Do a okay. course and test it, test it out on us first, and then we can go out and put a market for it. Okay. All right. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. All I, right. I mean, I have spent no less than 80 grand on courses. I have bought every course there is. Oh boy. All yeah. right. So we're it's all in here. Out. Now I get now that I'm getting older, I need to share it. Yes. That's uh, we, we we don't mind being your beta testers. Exactly. Cool. We'll be a tester, please. Okay, awesome. <laughs> we need it. <laughs> I think all what right. I'm gonna I there think is. I think what my plan is is I'm gonna I'm gonna you know provide like a free PDF that just shows you the parameters, what to put in. And then if you actually want the video, then, you know, obviously that takes me a lot more time to do that. Yeah. Okay. Understood. But uh, I, I, I've been, I, I know I promised it to you and I'm like, I got to get this going. <laughs> <laughs> so thank All you very right. much. Thank, like I always try to do with you guys is put you out of your comfort zone, comfort zone. And I'm glad you guys are pushing me out of my comfort zone to get in front of a camera and actually do this stuff. All right. Can't wait to see it. Cool. All right. Hey, anybody right. got any last parting thoughts before we go? Yeah, I do have one. Okay. Um, there was something I learned last week about infinite banking. Ah. Um, I think you guys know about we're entrepreneurs, but it's a what I call velocity banking. It's very good. General. You're break. You're breaking up, buddy. Nobody can tell what you're saying. <laughs> David, save your no. question for next week because we can't hear you or text it. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. 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 We can't. We You're breaking up too much. All right. On that note, great meeting, guys. Um, if you have any successes, let me know. All righty. All right. I will. We will. See you Thank guys. you. Bye. Wow.